Welcome to Unit 12, Video 1, Chemical Equations. By the end of this video, you should understand the difference between reactants and products in a chemical reaction, and you should be able to write formula equations to represent chemical reactions. A chemical reaction is a process in which one or more substances are converted into new substances with different physical and chemical properties. Recall that this is different from a physical process because the new substances have completely different sets of properties. They are not the same things as what we started with. For instance, we can take solid magnesium and react it with gaseous oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is a white flaky powder, whereas magnesium is a shiny metal and oxygen is a clear, ga clear gas. The product, magnesium oxide, has distinctly different properties than the reactants that formed it. A reactant is a substance entering a chemical equation. It's essentially what you start with. In this case, our reactants were magnesium and oxygen. A product is a substance produced by a chemical reaction. It's what you get. Here, we produced magnesium oxide. It's important to know that you can have one or many reactants and one or many products. There's no limit to the numbers of reactants and products you can have. Likewise, it doesn't matter the order in which we write reactants or products, as long as the reactants are on the left and the products are on the right. I could have written this same equation as oxygen plus magnesium yields MgO, and it would mean the same thing. A chemical equation is a representation of a chemical reaction that includes formulas of the reactants on the left and formulas of the products on the right. For instance, if we react iron and oxygen, we get iron 3 oxide. We can write the formulas as shown, with the reactants on the left and the products on the right. Notice this equation is not balanced. If you know about balancing equations, you'll see this is unbalanced. We'll get to balancing equations later. For now, let's focus on writing the equation. Here's two more examples of formula equations. Notice that the first reaction has two reactants and one product, and the second has one reactant and two products. Also notice that we've indicated the states of the reactants and products by using an S for solid, an L for liquid, a G for gas, and an AQ for aqueous. So the, the top equation would read solid aluminum plus gaseous oxygen yields solid aluminum oxide. The second one, aqueous hydrogen peroxide, yields liquid water plus gaseous oxygen. Here's some to try on your own. We'll do the first one together, then you can pause the video and try the next two. Here we're told that our reactants are liquid water, so I'll write H2O, and I know it's a liquid, and that's going to produce or decompose to yield hydrogen and oxygen. So I'm going to write an arrow to indicate yields, and then I know that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, so I get H2, and oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so I get O2. This is the formula equation for this process. Again, it's unbalanced, but don't worry about that right now. Pause the video here and try to write formula equations for the next two. Don't forget the rules that you've learned about writing formulas for compounds. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice in the very last one, you had to think about the fact that aluminum has a positive 3 charge and chlorine has a negative 1 charge when it combines to form an ionic compound. So you get AlCl3. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at the difference between reactants and products, reactants being on the left, what you start with, and products being on the right, what you produce. And then we looked at writing formula equations to represent chemical reactions. 